Well, good morning, everyone. So nice to see all of you this morning. You picked a good day to come to church. The choir will be singing. The men's quartet will be singing. Uh, I don't know how many Hosanna songs there are, but we're going to do at least two of them today. And uh, on this Palm Sunday, it's just a wonderful, well, significant, historical day in which we remember what Christ went through all those years ago. We remember this day, we remember this week. It marks the beginning of Holy Week, a time uh, that the Christian church had recognized and celebrated and remembered because of what took place that week. You are free. Because of what took place that week, the forgiveness and mercy and grace and goodness of God comes to you because of what Jesus endured and went through that week. Our lives are changed forever for this life and for all eternity. So it's good to be here and celebrate what Christ has done for us. Take time to remember and celebrate all that he's done for you. Now, traditionally during this time, the pastor doesn't normally preach a sermon at the beginning of the service. We, uh, they put me up there, and Gary, uh, who isn't here today, uh, does the announcements. So if there are announcements, testimonies, prayer requests this morning, I'm looking for a raised hand to, yes, very good. Thank you, Susan. You want me to write while you're... It's okay, it's all right. I have both praises and prayer requests this morning. I went to Rochester again with Dell yesterday. John is making slow progress. His lungs are gradually clearing. They've reduced the oxygen that he needs to take. His bed sore is healing, and there are a host of other small things that are happening. So praise be to God for knitting him back together and for the consistency of the medical staff there. You can pray, one, that his lungs will completely clear, two, that he'll, the, the feeding tube will be removed and he can start to eat regularly, and three, that he will be moved from the ICU to the regular cardiac unit. How are they doing in their inner spirits? Again, that's cause for praise. John has been in the hospital for a month now, in ICU for three weeks. That's a long time, but they're real two troopers, both of them, and they're pressing on. So just pray that God would continue to give them that fighting spirit and that sense of trust. Thank you. To me, it's amazing how I hear the reports of his spirit and uh, how he's managed to maintain a positive attitude through this whole thing is a testimony to him. It's also a testimony to Dell, who just is an encouragement to be around anyway. And uh, but thankfully, God is lifting her up at this time. Sally and Steve, it's so great to see you here. Did you want to make an announcement? I'm really reluctant to hand you this mic, you know, but I will. <laughs> so our praise is that we are back safely and uh, had a good time down south. My prayer request is Kara is having her surgery this coming week, so please keep her in your, in your prayers. And my mother was diagnosed with pneumonia a couple days ago, so she's, she's home and she's, she's a tough old woman, so she'll do fine, but in the meantime, she needs some, some prayers for her as well. Were you able to get her to go to the doctor so she could get a diagnosis? My mother? I, I made her, Kara made her go to the ER. She won't listen to me, but she will listen to Kara. So yes, we, she went and they diagnosed her, did not want to send her home, but she says, I'm going home. So okay. there she is. Yep. <laughs> well, they're talk about spunk. She's got a lot of spunk. Okay, uh, any other prayer requests, uh, praises, thoughts? How about from up there? Any, any? We do have a bulletin today, so you can, there's announcements in the bulletin which you can uh, 
take home with you. And if you didn't get a copy, see me later. I'll get you a copy. And, uh, or Amy will get you a copy. And uh, it's just so good to have you here today. And we're going to begin uh, with worship. And, uh, and thank you so much. So glad you're here to lead us in worship today. Thank you so much. was very good and I'm not just being nice that was we really enjoyed that uh, we really enjoyed your singing this morning thank you for leading us in worship this morning now it's your turn now we get to sing that other Hosanna and uh, grab so, and this song requires movement so if you're able Get your palm branches, stand to your feet, and sing 
Hosanna with us and wave those branches around. I have a call to worship for you this morning, uh, which I believe it includes. I think there's one more mic over here that we need to turn down or this monitor. Hey, there we go. Uh, Psalm 118 is, I believe, kind of a foreshadowing of what happened on Palm Sunday, and it refers to it, I think, in verse 25. Hosanna actually doesn't mean praise the Lord. It actually means, Lord, save us. Lord, save us. And so the people are crying out, Lord, save us. And, of course, that's why he came. But I'm just going to read selected Verses from Psalm 118 to get us started this morning is a call to worship in word. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. Uh, the Lord, the Lord is my strength and my defense and has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord this is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it's marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. We're here today uh, not to perform, not just to uh, show up. We're here to worship the one whose love and mercy 
endures forever. The one who gave his only son and the son who willingly came and endured what he endured on this holy week for you and for me. Let us begin our service this morning with prayer. Father, we're just so grateful. Grateful for all your goodness and grace to us, which you've shown us in every way, but in the most important way, in sending us the gift of your one and only Son. Our lives are different today because of what Jesus did when he came and when he laid down his life to pay the pardon, to pay the price for the pardon for our sins. So we're eternally grateful and we worship you and adore you. We come here this morning hoping to experience your presence and receive your mercy and grace anew. We know that your mercy, your goodness and grace are new every morning. And we humbly come to you knowing that we have sinned, knowing that we have fallen short, knowing that we haven't done everything we should have done and we've done some things we shouldn't have done. Won't you forgive us as we confess our sins? We know you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Your mercy and pardon are free to us not because we have earned it, but because Jesus, your son, has paid the price for it forever and ever. Thank you so much. We lift up some of those people who uh, are near and dear to us. And Lord, we begin with John. John and Del, won't you continue to stretch forth your hand to heal? Enable him to get to the point where he can leave ICU, where he can eat on his own, where he can get out of bed again, where he can once again have a normal life. Lord, we continue to pray. Raise him up. Heal him body, soul, mind, and spirit, and raise him up. Strengthen Dell as she uh, joins him in this journey of healing. Lord, we also lift up uh, Sally's mom pray for health and for healing for her won't you touch her this morning as well and be with Kara as she will uh, have a surgical procedure this week Lord I pray that you would bless her and her family those dear boys be with them all as she goes through this journey toward health and toward healing we're so thankful we can place her and them in your hands. Lord, I pray for the family of Ab Adam Colvert this week. Uh, they're going to miss him. We miss him. He was a part of our family here. He helped out at the food pantry years ago. And uh, as we remember his life, and as they remember him, and as his friends remember him, pray that people will know that, that you touched his life and made a difference in his life too. We continue to pray for the friends of, of, of Seth, the person who uh, took their own life. Won't you uh, bring comfort to those who are close, to those we're missing him. Lord, I pray for those who are unable to be with us this morning because of health issues or old age or whatever reason they're unable to be here, won't you be present with them as you're present with us? Those who are watching online this morning, won't you hear and answer their prayers, whether they're spoken or unspoken? And there's people in this room who have unspoken prayers as well. Won't you hear the cry of their hearts and answer their prayers too? Lord, we're so glad. So glad that we can come to you in prayer and talk to you and that you listen 
and that sometimes you even speak back to us. So Lord, while we're at it, won't you be with our church family? With our consistory, give them wisdom to lead this church. Won't you be with our community? Won't you be with our nation? It's just a terrible time of turmoil that we're in right now. So we lift our leaders into your hands. I pray that they will seek you for guidance and look to you for direction. Lord, give us grace. Give us grace that we might humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. Lord, won't you hear from heaven and heal our land. And Father, we also pray as Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for adding your prayers to my prayers this morning. And may God hear and answer our prayers as we lift up those in need to him. This time I'd like to invite the children to go to children in worship if you would like to. And I'd like to invite the rest of you to stand if you're able and join with me in singing, O oh, Worship the King. No? Sing, Rejoice the Lord is King with me, please. We're celebrating the coming of the King.
Father, thank you for all you've given to us, especially for the gift of your one and only Son, Jesus. As we think today of all he went through that week, we are grateful for your goodness and grace to us. So we take a moment this morning to offer our lives to you, our hearts for your home, our hands for your service, our voice to sing your praises. We look to you and you alone as our Savior, Lord, and King. And we also offer a portion of our substance to be used for your glory, to lift up the name of Jesus in this place and around the world. Help us to be faithful, to shine your light and share your love here and wherever we are. In Jesus' name. Amen. You folks are singing really good this morning, so I'm going to give you an extra minute to greet one another. They take two or three minutes and enjoy one another's company. And uh... Didn't Jesus say something like that? If someone wants to take one minute from you, give them two. <laughs> I just hope you're so understanding with your pastor. <laughs> Won't you read with me uh, my text for this morning from John chapter 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, 
It remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Thank you for reading God's word with me this morning. As always, it's a pleasure, an honor, and a privilege to be here with you in this place and have the opportunity to share God's precious and powerful word with you. Uh, you know that over the past few weeks, we've been talking about uh, developing a more genuine faith, a faith that is authentic, a faith that is real. And I, I believe that it's God's will and God's purpose and God's desire that we grow our faith and relationship with him. He wants, well, of course, he knows you, but he wants to know you better and he wants you to know him better. And that happens when we take an active action, when we determine every day, today, whatever comes my way, today, whatever I do, wherever I may go, today I'm going to let God use the things that happen in my life to grow my faith and my relationship with and so for many years I've preached on this text or the text in Luke about the triumphal entry. But I'd like to take a look at it today from this angle of growing your faith and relationship with God. Because everybody's at a different place in their walk with Christ. And as we get into the text a little bit, we will see that there were a lot of different people who participated in the triumphal entry and they all were viewing Christ from a different place and from a different perspective. For uh, my part, I have a little illustration for you this morning because I think it's important that we have a goal that we have a purpose and that we define that goal and purpose. We have a target in life to grow and develop our relationship with Christ, to know him better, to be closer to him each and every day. That's his goal for our lives and it should be our goal for our lives. If our goal is just to make money, well, some of us might be pretty good at that, but might I say that that's the wrong goal? I don't mean to pick on Bill, but I can't help it. If his goal is to sell 200 cars this week, that's kind of a high and lofty goal, but good. Yeah, I mean, that'd be great. It's a great goal. But if you're a follower of a Christ, it's not your main goal. And your main goal isn't to get even with those who have wronged you. Your main goal isn't to build huge buildings or to accomplish great things or to be, well, rich and famous because if that's your goal, you're aiming for the wrong target. And if you're aiming for the wrong target, then you'll never hit your goal. Your goal is to know Christ and the fellowship of his sufferings, that you might also take part in his resurrection, to know him better, to love him more dearly and know him more nearly. That has to be our goal. And each and every day when we rise, how can I grow closer to you today, Jesus? That's my goal. And so if we have the right goal, 
and we take aim at the right target. My aim is to please God in everything I do and everything I say, to live a life worthy of his calling. If that's your goal, then you have a chance of hitting the target. I just want you to know that there's some things that even this pastor won't do in this church, okay? I know you want to see me hit the target. But you get the idea. Our goal is to know him and to know him better. And on this Palm Sunday, nearly 2,000 years ago, when Christ entered Jerusalem, and the people were shouting and waving of palm branches and saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And prophecy was being fulfilled. Do you remember it said in Zechariah, rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem, your king is coming to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This day, prophecy was being fulfilled. It seemed like they were going to make Jesus king at any minute. It seemed like the Romans wouldn't have a chance against someone who could raise the dead and feed the multitudes and heal the sick. And yet we know, and Jesus knew, that that was not what was going to on that day. As we consider this text this morning, let us pray. Father, we're so grateful that Jesus came. And we acknowledge willingly and fully and wholeheartedly that Jesus is King and Jesus is Lord. And we're so grateful that he came and did what he did that week that our lives might be changed forever. As we consider your word today and this text today, we ask that your Holy Spirit would come. Open our ears to hear your word. Open our eyes to see your truth and your glory. Touch our hearts. Touch our heart and, and change and transform our lives, not just for a moment, but for all eternity. Grow our faith and our relationship with you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's my thought for today. When your faith and relationship with God grows, you know him better. That's the end result of growing your faith. You get to know him better. You get to love him more dearly and know him more nearly. Your relationship with God grows. And as I always want to say, God is more concerned with relationship than he is with religion. Doing all the religious things, all the correct religious things, is really nice, but only if doing those things, it grows your faith and your relationship with God. So if you're praying, you pray, hoping to grow your relationship with him. If you pray and fast, well, I guess that's even better, but you do it to grow your relationship with him, not to prove how tough you are. When you give, when you serve, when you love, when you care, when you come to worship, all of these different Christian disciplines that we perform, when we get in his word, it's not so we can prove how smart we are, it's so we can grow our faith and relationship with him. And on this special day, Jesus came into Jerusalem, and it seemed on the outward appearance that they really got it. He's here. The one who God has promised is here. This is a special day. Jesus knew it was a special day. He made a point of getting this colt and riding it into Jerusalem. The disciples and the others made a point of, of getting palm branches and their cloaks and throwing them down before him and waving them in the air and, and even shouting the right words. 
Jesus knew this day was coming. He knew the prophecies of old. He knew what lay ahead of him. He also knew what lay ahead for these people. I think I've got it here someplace. He said, you, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They'll dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. He knew what was going to happen in 70 AD. He also knew what was going to happen on Thursday night and Friday morning and Sunday morning. The interesting thing is most of the people there didn't really have a clue what was going on or what was going to happen. And there were a variety of people there. And I just want to look at the people who were there for a minute this morning because in preaching 101, that's what they tell you. Figure out what the main theme and main idea of the text is. And notice who is there present in the story. And as you go down through the text, they tell you. John tells us who is there. Who is there when all this is happening? Uh, it says at first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had done to, been done to him. You see, his disciples were there. Of course they were there. They'd been there with Jesus for the past three years. They knew him better than anyone else. But they didn't really realize what was going on until later after he was glorified. But they were there. They helped. A couple of them went and got the coal. Others threw down their cloaks. Others were shouting the words and leading the praise and waving the palm branches. They were there. But it wasn't just his disciples were there. It says, now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. You remember just a couple weeks before this. Somebody came to Jesus and said, you know, your friend Lazarus is sick. And it tells us Jesus waited two more days where he was before he came to see Lazarus. By the time he got there, he had been dead four days. Jesus said, well, where have you laid him? And he spoke the words into the tomb of Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, bound head to foot in grave clothes, kind of came hopping or stumbling out of the tomb. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Well, there was a pretty good crowd there when Jesus did that. And the Bible tells us that those people were there at the triumphal entry. Those people who had witnessed Christ deliver Lazarus from the dead were there that day. They'd seen the sign. I believe that Lazarus was there. And Mary and Martha, the ones who had experienced this miracle, they were there too, shouting Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But not even just those people, it says, uh, they continued to spread the word and many people because they had heard that he performed this sign went out to meet him too. They weren't there for the miracle. They heard about the miracle. And so they went to see him too. I want to expand this even more. You know, I think there was probably somebody there who ate of the loaves and the fishes that Jesus multiplied out in the desert. The text doesn't say that. I'm going out, so I'm reading between the lines. I believe there's people there. He fed 5,000 one time, 4,000 another time. Probably people there who had tasted the food that he had multiplied. Maybe there were people there 
out of whom he had delivered and set free and cast demons out of. Maybe there were people there. Maybe someone like blind Bartimaeus made his way over there. Someone who was blind and he had given sight to. People were there. People whom Jesus had set free. People whom Jesus had, maybe people who had heard the Sermon on the Mount. Or people who had heard about the Sermon on the Mount. But anyway, you get a good crowd of people coming into Jerusalem. And there's probably people there who just saw a big commotion going on over there, and they went over to join in too. And then we have our other friends there, the Pharisees. The Pharisees, they're there too. They say, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after them. They're jealous. They're envious of Jesus. They're upset because the people should be following them, not him. The people should be listening to them, not him. They should be doing things our way, the religious way, and following our rules and not him. And unfortunately, we still have Pharisees in the church today. But what I want you to see, and, and, and also there's some Greeks there. They travel all the way from Greece, and they want to see Jesus. But the picture I'm painting here, at least I believe, is there are people of all levels of faith here. There's some who have experienced the miracles of Christ. There's some who have tasted the miracles. There's some who've seen him work wonders. Some who've heard the marvelous words that he's spoken. Some who believe with all their heart. And some who can't stand him and don't want to hear him anymore. There's some who only heard about Jesus. Some who showed up that don't even know what's going on. The same is true in any meaning today. In any church today, there's people of all different levels of faith because some people are doing a better job at growing their faith than others. But there's some who only know about Jesus that he was born. We celebrate it every Christmas. He was born, God sent his son. That's all they know about Jesus, all they want to know. There's others who have prayed the sinner prayer and, and have repented of their sins and invited Christ into their heart and, and they've just kind of stayed there at that level. They know Jesus is Savior, but they don't really grow. Uh, they come to church on Christmas and Easter, but they don't really seek to grow their faith every day. But there's others who have been delivered and set free by the Jesus. There's others who not only recognize him as Savior, they recognize him as Lord. There's some who seek to follow him every day and grow their faith and relationship with God every day. Who hunger and thirst after righteousness and hunger and thirst after, their, after his word. And there's some people who read his word every day and there's some people who never read his word. They profess the name of Christ. They call themselves Christians. They even come to church. They never read the Bible. There's people of all levels of faith present that day as Jesus rides into Jerusalem. Just like there are today people of all levels of faith. But what matters most, what matters most is the relationship that you have with Jesus. Not just what you think he can do for you, but you want to know him. Know him better every day. This is part of the problem with the people had on that day. They were there because they thought he could set them free from Rome. 
They were willing to worship him and, and acknowledge him as king because they hoped that he would be the king who would set them free from Rome. And oh, how they hated Rome. So they were bitterly disappointed when a few days later he was standing there, arrested, convicted, bloodied and beaten and sentenced to death on a cross. Some of the same voices that shouted Hosanna on Sunday shouted crucify him on Friday. Because it was hard to believe that this man who was standing before him, beaten and bloodied and bruised, was the king of the world. And that he was the one that God had sent to deliver them and free them and give them eternal life. You see, this day was not the most significant day in the life of Christ or the most significant day in the life of Jesus or in history, but that day was coming in just one week. That day when the stone was rolled away, the tomb was empty and Jesus Christ was risen just as he said. When your faith grows, then you, like Jesus, will be able to see beyond those difficult days to that better day that he has promised ahead. We all go through difficult days. None of us go through days like Jesus went through. But if your faith is grown sufficiently, you can get through the difficult you can get through the brokenness. You can get through the trials and temptations and troubles and problems because you know, you know God and you know that he will get you through and bring you to that better day that lays ahead that he promised. Jesus was willing to face those difficult days so that eventually, on Sunday morning, he could triumph over death and hell and the grave. The writer of Hebrews put it this way. For the joy, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God willing to face all of that for you and for me. Consider him, the writer says, consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. When you face trials, when you face temptation, when you face difficult days, consider him. Don't grow weary. Don't go, grow tired, don't lose heart, but grow your faith so that you too will share in that glorious resurrection. Yes, there was a day when Jesus came riding into Jerusalem as proclaimed as king. There was a day or a night when he was betrayed by those closest to him, was denied they couldn't even stay awake as he asked them to watch and pray with him one hour in the garden. A night when he was betrayed, arrested, and then that night turned into the next day when he was tried, convicted, beaten, and crucified. But there also was a day when the stone was rolled away when the tomb was empty, for Jesus Christ had risen, as he said. And there will be a day. There will be a day when he returns, when the trump in Christ sounds 
and the dead in Christ rise first, and they and we who are alive and remain will join with them in the air, and we will ever be with the Lord. There will be a day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There will be a day when the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. There will be a day when there will be no more darkness, no more crying, no more tears, no more sadness, no more sickness, no more evil. There will be a day when we'll have nothing else to do but fall before him and worship and praise him for who he is and all he has done. Father, grow our faith, won't you? Won't you grow our faith to the point where we can look beyond the troubles of today to those days that lay ahead? Thank you. Thank you that you sent your son. And we are never the same again. Because you did. So grow our faith. Grow our faith beyond that area where we're just drinking milk and give us the strong meat and, and give us the ability to face those tomorrows. <laughs> that songwriter wrote, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We look forward to that day with all our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. How I long to breathe the air of heaven Where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets To look upon the one who bled to save me And walk with him for all eternity There will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with he who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord.
when Jesus rode into Jerusalem that day. How? It was with mixed emotions. It was a bittersweet day because, gee, the people were finally recognizing him as the king who had come. The king who had come to, to bring freedom, to bring life, bring goodness and grace of God to them. The Messiah. And yet Jesus knew. Jesus knew what the next few days would bring. But, as the scripture says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He endured, endured this, the, the, the beating, the mocking, the trials. He endured those difficult days because he knew a better day was coming. As we travel with him through this week, as you open the scriptures and read about the death and the resurrection of Christ, uh, these gentlemen are going to sing a song to help us prepare for those days that lay ahead. We identify with him in his sufferings that we might also identify with him in his resurrection.
Thank you so much. What a reminder it is. Christ went through this week because of the seriousness of our sin. He couldn't just say, I forgive you. A price had to be paid for our sin, and he was willing to pay that price. What a horrible price he had to pay. Yet he was willing to do it. Why? Because of his amazing, wonderful, great love for each of us. You're welcome to join us on Thursday evening as we go a little deeper, remembering the price that he paid. Be in your scriptures this week, refreshing your memory of what he did for you. May the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the presence and power of his Holy Spirit be with you this holy week. Amen. You're also invited for lunch after church. Thank you.